Hey Lemfam, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the interview hack or the best way to get decision makers whenever you're doing enterprise deals. Dominic actually reached out to me asking if I could help him to figure out the best decision maker whenever you're doing enterprise sales. Enterprise sales are pretty complex. Obviously, depending on the companies, the decision maker might differ. Let's have a look at Dominic's business. Dominic has a business that helps companies reduce the time spent by IT professionals. So they are targeting either IT departments or HR or sometimes engineering department depending on the name of each department in each company and it's often a struggle. So I mentioned that I was going to share with you the interview hack. The interview hack is literally the best way to figure out who is a decision maker and I'm going to share exactly why. You have two ways of doing the interview hack. The first one is very gray, a bit borderline and the other one is very genuine. Let's start with the very genuine approach. The interview technique is to basically reach out to people in specific companies who you assume that are already involved in the hiring process of developers for Dominic's case. In that case, you should reach out to them in order to build relationships and understand what is exactly their hiring process, who is involved, and most importantly, who is the decision maker. But how exactly do you do that? That's when the interview type of approach comes into place. The idea is to reach out by sending an email to this person, mentioning that you are doing an interview interview about a specific topic that your company is talking about. For example, in Dominic's case, I would reach out personally to HR, CTOs, uh, head of engineering, etc. So anyone that would be involved in the recruitment of developers. And here is the type of email that I would write. I'm writing an article about best practices in recruiting developers. I was chatting with company A, B and C and I'd love to include you in the article. The first sentence is to mention some companies that might be relevant to your target audience. So for example, if you're reaching out to Apple, Apple, for example, who's hiring like tons of developers, you could say, I was talking to Facebook, Amazon, and Netflix on how they hire like developers, and I'd love to also include you. The reason why is to just add a little bit more social proof. And you don't actually have to add a conversation with those companies. The fact that you're just reaching out to them in parallel kind of works. Then comes the second sentence. I've read XYZ about company name. So here in that case, it could be like, I've recently read the importance of privacy for Apple, etc., etc. So it can be like, a, a blog post, it can be a news, something that is relevant to the specific topic, or it could be something about like, I've recently read that Facebook is hiring like 10,000s of developers in the coming year. So anything that could be relevant to your article and to your topic that you have also seen in the news of the enterprise. Something also very simple to do, and here it could be the case for Dominic, is to actually go on enterprise pages on LinkedIn and see how many developers they have hired in the last year. Thanks to Sales Navigator on LinkedIn, you can see the headcount group growth of each department and specifically for him who is basically trying to reduce the time spent by engineers on the hiring process being able to spot companies that have hired a lot of developers in the last year is basically his target audience then once you mention the info you have about the company you say so i think you'd be the perfect fit then i would go with being very straightforward what's in it for you and then a few bullet points. First one, you'll get mentioned in front of an audience of 1,000 plus individuals. So where did you get those 1,000 plus individuals? You don't always need to have an audience. If you don't have a newsletter, if you don't have an audience on LinkedIn or whatever, you can share a specific number by just thinking about a group or somewhere on Facebook where you want to share the article. So for example, if you're going to share the article in a group with, let's say, 5,000 people, you're not technically lying when you're saying that the article will be shared with 5,000 people. Second bullet point, we have a lot of developers reading our blog, so it means also potential candidates. And third point, you'll get unique insights into how other companies are recruiting. So here, I'm writing the email obviously for Dominic, so it's very straightforward, very clear. But every time you send out a cold email to someone, you need to answer what's in it for them. First, people love to get interviewed because most of the time they talk about themselves. Then it's a great way to get more exposure, so you're increasing people's status. And the third part is obviously those companies, if you've spotted correctly their pain point, which is hiring and in that case for Dominic hiring developers the fact that you can actually start you know like uh, telling them that they're gonna have potential candidates
rates applying, then it's a win-win for everyone. And for you, during the interview, it's the best way literally to ask them who is involved in the hiring process, how exactly are they doing it, what tools are they using. That way you'll be able for each enterprise that you're reaching out to, to one, create content and associate your name with their big logos. And secondly, map out exactly who is the decision maker and potentially ask later on to the person you've connected with to give you intros to the right person so you can start building your network and connect more with other people. So what exactly will this approach get you personally? One, you will become an expert in your field because the more people you network with, the more you are perceived as an expert. If, for example, I'm telling you that I've talked with Amazon, Facebook, Google, etc., etc., about growth, then what are you going to think? Oh, this guy must be very knowledgeable about it. Well, that's exactly the same approach. Second thing, you are able to build relationships with your potential customers, which means that if your article is great, if you connect well with them, down the line, they're going to be interested in you. Think about it. If you start asking hundreds of questions to someone at a party, what are they going to say? Ask something in return. Because technically, whenever you're having a conversation with people, if you are interested in them, they will be interested in you in return. That's how basic relationships work. And the third part is all about mapping out exactly who is the decision maker in the enterprise you're targeting. But always remember, in enterprise sales, you will have to go through several gatekeepers, several decision makers. So the more you're connected within the company, the better. Earlier, I talked about another interview hack that is a bit on the gray slash unethical. So you decide whether or not you want to do it. If you're an early stage startup, I guess, you know, sometimes you have to bend the rule a little. So the strategy is pretty simple. What you could do if you were in Dominic's shoes is to actually look out all the companies that are hiring a lot of developers. Why? Because they're obviously in your ideal customer profile. We've covered that part earlier. But then what should you do? Look at the job offers, look at what they are looking for exactly, and then you can start applying. So apply with the exact set of skills that they are looking for, match exactly the job description, and then see who is basically contacting you. That will help you to understand what is the first step of their recruitment process. Does that come from an HR? Does that come from an engineering manager? Does that come from someone else? In any case, you'll get the first name, the email of the person who's in charge of the recruitment, which will help you to then map out who's the exact decision maker or who's at least involved in the process. And that can be your entry point to the recruitment process and hence your ICP. I hope that was helpful. Have an amazing day. Love you.